So there's the the story of uh, Newton coming up with quite a few ideas uh, during a pandemic. We're uh, on the outskirts <laughs> of a pandemic ourselves. Right. And a lot of people use that example as motivation for everybody while they're in lockdown to get stuff done. Uh, so what's that about? Can you tell the story of that? Well, I can. Let me first say that, uh, of course, we've been teaching over Zoom, over Zoom lately. Yeah. And there was no Zoom back then? <laughs> there was no Zoom back then. Nah. I, although it wouldn't have made much difference because the story was Newton was so complicated in his lectures that at one point, uh, Humphrey Newton actually said that uh, he might as well have just been lecturing to the walls because nobody was there yeah. uh, to listen to it. So what difference? But uh, Also not a great <laughs> teacher, huh? Uh, if you look at his optical notes, if that's what he's reading from... Oh, boy. Okay. Uh, oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> So what uh, what can you say about that whole journey through the pandemic that uh, that resulted in so much innovation right. in such a short of amount of time? Well, I mean, there's two times that he goes home. Uh, would he have been able to do it and do do it if he'd stayed at Cambridge? I think he would have. I don't think it really, uh, although I do like to tell my advanced students when I lecture on the history of physics to the physics and chemistry students, especially we've been doing it over Zoom in the last year, when we get to Newton and so on, because these kids are, you know, 21, 22, I like to say, well, you know, when Newton was your age and he had to go home during an epidemic, do you know what he produced? So can you actually summarize this for people who don't know, how old was Newton and what did he produce? Well, Newton goes up to Cambridge, as it said, when he's 18 years old, in 1660. And the so-called miraculous year, the Annus Mirabilis, where you get the development in the calculus and in optical discoveries especially, is 1666, right? So he's, what, 24 years old mm -hmm. uh, at the time. But judging from his the notebooks that I mentioned, He's already, before that, come to an awful lot of uh, developments uh, over the previous couple of years. Uh, does it have much to do with the fact that he twice went home? It is true that the optical experiments that we talked of a while ago with the light on the wall moving up and down were done at home. In fact, you can visit the very room he did it in to this day. So cool. Yeah, it's very cool. And if you look through the window in that room, there is an apple tree out there in the garden. So you might be wrong about this. Uh, I thought you were lying to me. What? Maybe there's an <laughs> apple involved after all. Well, it's, 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 it's not the same apple tree, but it's cuttings. How from do you cuttings. know? Well, it's well, they, don't, they don't last that long, but okay. <laughs> it's 400 years ago. Oh, right? not the same. <laughs> Oh, wow, I continue with the dumbest questions. Okay, so you're saying that perhaps going home was not... It may have given him an opportunity to work things through. And after all, he did make use of that room and he could do things like put a you know, a shade over the window, move things around, cut holes in it and do, do stuff. Probably in his rooms at Cambridge, he maybe not. Although when he stayed at Cambridge... Subsequently, he became a fellow, and then the first, uh, actually the second Lucasian professor there. He was actually really the first one because uh, Isaac Barrow, who was the mathematician, professor of optics, who recognized Newton's genius, gave up what would have been his position because he recognized um, not Newton may not have learned too much from him, although they did interact. And, and so Newton was the first Lucasian professor, really, mm. the one that Stephen Hawking held uh, till he died. Um, and we know that the rooms that he had there at Cambridge, uh, subsequently, because rooms are still there, uh, he built an alchemical furnace outside, did all sorts of stuff in those rooms. Uh, and uh, don't forget, you didn't have to do too much as a Lucasian professor. Every so often, you had to go give these lectures whether anybody was there or not, yeah. and deposit the notes uh, you know, for the future, which is how we have all those things.